and thank you so much for tuning in to Lex Play today. If the hat didn't clue you in, I finally unlocked terraforming, so as you might have guessed, this is going to be my very first terraforming tutorial. Uh, we're gonna recreate an area that I made on Lorien because several people have asked me how I managed to make the sunken waterfall for Wolfgang. So yeah, today I'm going to show you how to make it on my relatively empty map, Lost Falls. I've decided to do it in this area. If you look at the map, you can see that there's a rock on the back there, and that's where I'll stand to be able to tunnel into this area to create the sunken uh, look. That'll just make it a lot easier, I think, than having to repeatedly climb like into and out of the little hole that I have to make. So yeah, let's get started. I've already cleaned up all of the weeds and everything in this area, but it's important to go ahead and clean up everything else as well. So what I'm gonna do first is just dig up all of these flowers and chop down the trees. Okay, now that this area is clean, we're gonna go ahead and tear down part of this top cliff. If you look at the image from Lorien, you'll see that the area around Wolfgang's house, there are cliffs on either side, but the middle of it where the house is placed is empty. So we're gonna wanna clear out some of these cliffs just so that we do have room to make the waterfall and to incorporate the house. You might see the pattern I'm creating here. It's quicker if you skip lines when you're tearing down cliffs because when you just do one, it'll do like this and you'll have to do it twice just to remove one block. That doesn't happen if you either skip and do it like this or if you do like I've been doing and just skip whole lines so that it creates single lines that you can terraform without stopping. Also, if you look at the picture, you'll see that on either side, there are cliffs that are coming out um, that stay up. So I'm just gonna terraform this one so that it stays like it is. I'm gonna leave about four blocks. That'll give us room for water and trees. So I'm gonna start shaving the cliff here. As you go, you might have to remove more things. Um, that's okay, just do what you need to do as you go. around the waterfall is going to be up to you to decide like what you want it to look like. On Lorien, I had cliffs surrounding it. Here, I might just tear most of these down and leave this space open. This isn't gonna be a permanent build for Lost Falls. It's just gonna be for the purpose of this tutorial. Now that I've got this general shape and I know that I'm going to have my trees and waterfalls here, I'm going to go ahead and tunnel in from the rock. The cliffs you remove here, you're going to put back, so don't worry about it tearing into your map a little bit. It's going to be fine. You're going to board this back up after you've made a little hole in the cliff area right here. This is how I've just made like a sort of doorway into this area so that I can make a sunken waterfall. As you go, like I said, you'll have to continue to edit the way it looks. Um, you might have to remove more cliff than you thought, but either way, just power through. You'll figure out a shape that you like. And it doesn't have to look exactly like this. This can be whatever shape you want it to be for your sunken waterfall. 
The most important thing is that you pay attention to where you're going to want trees and water to be so that you leave room for that. Here I've realized that I want one more just area of cliff that I can work with, so I'm going to board this up now so that I can add an extra layer of cliff on the top just to give me a little bit more space to work with. I've decided that I want to give a little extra cliff to the top on the side just so that I can create like a second waterfall area. So I know that's what I want my general shape to look like at the top so now I can go down and get rid of any extra cliff down here. At this point, I would suggest go ahead and trying to get the right shape that you want. So I'm going to shape these cliffs how I'd like them to look when I'm finished. And this, of course, is where I'm going to be kind of emulating Wolfgang's area. So this is going to be a waterfall and so is this. I definitely advocate for finishing the bottom layer before you start adding water above. That way you have flexibility in your terraforming. A specific aspect of the sunken waterfall I did for Wolfgang is the fact that I did have a tree on this lower level. So I'm just gonna place a little custom design just right here where I want the tree to be. I'm gonna want it to be right here so that it has like nine full, or there's like a full nine block area so that I can fit a tree. So exactly where I'm standing, I'm gonna make a custom design just so I know that that's where I want my tree to be. It's just gonna be a temporary design that I place. So this is gonna be where my tree goes. So that way I know not to terraform this area. Now I'm gonna get my water tool out and I'm gonna start shaping the water around the area that I want to have water. As I said, you can kind of edit this as you go. It doesn't have to be perfect when you first make it. Just kind of get a general idea of what you want the water to look like. I know for me, I want it to kind of wrap around. I don't want it to be just this whole area. So I'm gonna shape it now to be sort of curvy. So I think this is the general shape I'm gonna want for this bottom layer. This is what I want my water to look like. This will give me room for a tree right here. And it'll also give me space to add some decorations here. I have some flowers and bushes to place, so that'll just be cute to put around this area. I'm gonna go ahead and plant some things and I've placed out items that I know I want to incorporate somewhere in this area. So I'm gonna go and grab a couple of them. Another thing I added on Lorien that I don't have here yet is butterfly models. I don't have any on this island yet, so I can't add those until I have them. This is just to kind of give depth to the sunken waterfall to add things here that will just give it more layers, will make it seem more full. Obviously the flowers and bushes used to decorate here, you can cater to your specific theme. Whenever I have an empty spot that I don't know what to do with, I either terraform to add more water, which I'm gonna attempt to do here, or I just add more custom designs. So I haven't gone through and added all the custom designs that I want, but I know that if I need to, I can add some to fill in this empty space. So I'll just do that now. And you can never go wrong just adding more and more flowers. I find that they really help keep the area full and just make it feel more complete. This area I'm just gonna leave empty for now until I either get more flowers that I like or figure out what else to do with it. But now that I've finished this bottom portion, I can add the tree. I've personally just dug up a few that were already grown, 
but if you'd like you can always plant a sapling and it'll just take a few days to grow. But this is so you can get an idea of what the tree looks like already. So this is what it's going to look like. Now that we've done that we can start decorating the second cliff tier. Going by layer just helps you stay organized and also assures that you don't have to keep going up and down. I know I'm not going to have water here so I'm going to go ahead and plant a bush because I just think that'll be cute. Again, I'm just going to fill in this area with custom designs just to make it feel fuller. Also, you can make things look cuter if instead of putting them on the exact block, you let them lie on those little half areas so that it's half on the custom design and half not. I just think it's cute, another way to add depth to this area. And at the beginning, like I said, you don't have to have a completely full area. This is just to get an idea of what it's going to look like when you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and terraform the water on the second cliffs. So now you can kind of see the sunken aspect already. This is a waterfall that's surrounded by cliffs. So you're just overlooking the waterfall. You're not on the same level as it. But I like to personally add extra depth by including a second layer of waterfall as well. I just think it adds a lot of beauty. And one thing that I usually try to do with my waterfalls is make them uneven. So you can see I'm only gonna terraform two waterfall spots here. But the other layer, the second cliff layer, is going to be three waterfall spaces. So it's kind of, it's not even, but it looks cute like that. Do you see? It's like staggered. And at this point, you're going to mostly be decorating. This is the bulk of the terraforming work you're going to do. At this point, you just want to start adding plants, making it seem fuller, you know. And see how I made this four blocks? That's so I can add trees in this area. So you need to have nine blocks and a square in order to place a tree and water cuts into that. So I've made this water a little bit up so that I can fit a tree right here. I also think it looks cuter if you make different trees instead of all of them being the same type. So I'm gonna put a hardwood and a cedar at the top here. Obviously, I'm going to add more decoration if I end up doing it like later when I have more items, I'll add more decoration up here. But for right now, I think it's cute to just leave it pretty simple. Just put some custom designs and plants and trust in the process. Even if it doesn't look perfect now, when the flowers are growing and the bushes and everything, it's going to be super cute. I also think terraforming just looks better if you have smooth corners, so hit it once, it won't tear the cliff down, and even if there's a tree, you can have it circled like this, you can round the cliff. So again, just adding layers here. This is a little different from how I did it on Morian, but I think it'll be cute. Another thing you can do is, if you do plan to make a house area here, you can map out where you want to have the house. So I'm just gonna use a custom design to kind of map out the house dimensions. I believe it's four by three. So if this is where my house is gonna be, I'll have an idea of what I can do here. So maybe I want to completely encase the house in cliffs, or maybe now I know that I can have, you know, some other item here. I think I'll add a street lamp just to give it a little more depth. So now I've got this here, and if my house is right here, I think that'll be pretty cute. Maybe add another bush. I'm a big fan of using the shrubs as decor. And because we know our house is going to be here, you might want to get rid of some of this cliff. So you might want to leave a little bit to the side just so that, again, the house is encased. But if you don't like it being so narrow, the path to this house, you can always just edit it out like this. I'm going to go ahead and add another tree to the top. And again, if you go to Lorien, you'll see that I've added a lot more depth there. There are cliffs surrounding even the house itself on all sides. So it's like a little hidden away area. You don't have to do that. You can make your sunken waterfall however you want. Here, I'm just going to add space for another tree. So 
So yeah, this is what it looks like just bare terraforming. Obviously you can add more decor, you can add fences. I know I added hedges along the edge here just to make it seem more natural. You can also just add more shrubs. There are never too many shrubs, just add another. And then I like to give it a little bit of life just by adding a little table and chair. I think that's super cute. So now it's like someone's having a little picnic. And you can also add pathing here if you'd like, just to lead up to the house. I went ahead and unlocked all the paths because I wasn't sure which one I would want to use at any point. But yeah, you can do whatever you think is right for your island. I personally like to do this to give the path some life, either turn it into a circle or into like a double teardrop shape. I just think that's super cute to add layers to your terraforming and to your island. I also think it's cute to like alternate which side of the path is going to be like rounded and which side of the path is going to be corners still. It's like you'll see here these have different, it's like they're pointing in different directions, so I just think that's cute. For the sake of this tutorial, I am going to move one of my villager houses here, just so you can see what the finished product would look like. So yeah, we'll see what this area looks like with a house, and obviously, as I said, you can add whatever depth you want to this area. Like, it's good to add more things just so that you have, you know, a fuller looking area. So I've moved so that all the flowers and bushes have grown, so let's just take a look at what the sunken waterfall looks like now. I moved Nan's house here. I think it looks really nice. I think it fits the vibe really well. And this is what her sunken waterfall looks like. Like I said, the area around this wouldn't be empty if this were going to be a permanent sector of my island. I would add, you know, more decoration, more flowers, etc. I hope you found this helpful. I'm still learning how to teach you guys terraforming, so if you have any requests or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Of course, here's Peaches. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video.